What's going on guys, you're chillin' with Channel Zabaza, and today I've got another battle for you with my Little Cup team. Now, looking at my opponent's team, threats, holy shit, the entire team is one giant threat all rolled up into one. And I am immediately at a disadvantage. You know, I look at, when I battle teams like this in Little Cup, when I'm using the teams that I'm using, I think, oh my god, this is one hell of an uphill battle. And I just get, I get pretty damn intimidated. So, looking at my opponent's team, threats. Murkrow, obviously, because it's Prankster, it's got massive attack, massive speed, um, it can run special or physical or a mixed set. There's really just no telling what it's running until you really battle it and find out. Next, we've got a Ponyard, which, let's face it, knockoff. That's all they do nowadays. Knockoff, Sucker Punch, knockoff, Sucker Punch. Abra, which has been a specially offensive threat ever since, like, 4th gen. Well, actually, I can only assume 4th gen, because I started in 5th gen. But I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be used in 4th gen, considering how fast it is and how much special attack it has. Juniper's pretty fast on its own, plus it's got a really good attack stat and can just rapid spin away hazards pretty easily, or set them up himself. Chinchou can run a variety of sets. It can run specially defensive, physically defensive, it can run Scarf, it can run Rest Sleep Talk. He's got a Heal Bell set that works with the Rest Sleep Talk. And finally, the standard .png Mianfu. There's really nothing else to say about this Mianfu. You know what they do? Fake out, U-turn, knock off. Then they have a fighting move for stab. They've actually been running Drain Punch more nowadays, which is surprising considering how much High Jump Kick was favored last generation. But enough with that, let's get to the battle! So this battle is against my bud, Phoenix Master 1. Uh, I'm sorry man, I don't know your Skype, or not your Skype, your channel off the top of my head, uh, but I promise I will go searching for it after, uh, or correction, before I upload the battle. Anyway, I start off with my, uh, wow, I'm so, Noibat, couldn't even think of the, na the name. Start off with my Noibat, he starts off with Mianfu, as I thought he would. I go for the Hurricane, just in case he wanted to stay in, and this would also let me scout to see if he was Scarfed. I am in a Violite uh, Noibat, so hopefully I would have been able to take the Stone Edge. I have no idea if I could have, probably not, but still, I just wanted to, I wanted to try and get rid of that Mianfu, so I went for the Hurricane. Uh, so seeing this, I'm just going to U-turn out into my Skiddo as he goes for the Scald. I was actually thinking he might go for Ice Beam, so you guys might be wondering why I went into Skiddo in the first place if I thought he had Ice Beam. That's because this is a specially defensive Skiddo, which can take almost, like, almost any specially defensive hit, and takes physical hits pretty well. Not great, but pretty well. And he's going to go for the knockoff. Skiddo, uh, I thought he might try and go for the Roar, or, they're not Roar. I go for the Roar. That ah, can't talk. I go for the Roar. I thought he might try and set up a Swords Dance, so I tried to roar him out, and he goes into his Abra. So I probably should have switched there, but I guess better that uh, Skiddo get knocked off than something other, something else on my team that like needs their item. So now I go into Froki, I'm pretty sure he's, I was pretty sure he was just going to switch, but you know what, U-Turn would have still done a good amount to Abra, especially since it doesn't have any defense, and I can go into my Noibat again. And here I'm going to go for another U-turn. I'm just trying to whittle down this Chin Chow to the point where I can easily knock it out. And I'm going to go in my Froki again for just one more U-turn as he goes for the Discharge and he gets the Para. Yeah, just my luck, right? But you know what? That's why people run Discharge or Scald because of that 30% chance to Para or Burn. And you, you can't blame him for it. It's just, it's perfectly normal, but it, it's annoying nonetheless. So... I'm going to go for the U-turn as he just goes for the rest. I get off just a little bit of damage, so that's pretty nice. And now uh, I'm going to have to go into my Pancham. Now you guys may be wondering, Pancham? Why? Because my Pancham actually has Bulldoze. And, my bu and uh, well, Bulldoze is going to do a nice amount to this Chinchou as he uh, rest talks in, or sleep talks into the rest. And I know that my Storm Throw would do more, but I just needed some prior damage off, and I thought that if I went for the Bulldoze, it would slow him down enough to where he won't get another chance to Scald Burn me. So, down goes Chin Chow, and out comes Murkrow. And I'm a little worried about this. Uh, I don't want to get Brave Birded right off the bat, so I'm going to go in my Hone Edge, and he is not going... He just goes right for the Brave Bird. He's not messing around here. And I'm at a bit of a disadvantage just because these things carry Sucker Punch. But I also thought that he might um, carry Heat Wave, in which case I can take one, count on one, 
And I, here I go for the Iron Head, and I see he's uh, got Sub and Brave Bird. This actually reminds me of my 5th Gen set. So he reveals the Sucker Punch. It, it gets me down to 1 HP thanks to a crit, which is annoying, but hey, you deal with the dice. You're, you're de you deal the hand you're dealt. And here, now he goes shows me as the Roost. So this is almost identical. I mean, I'm sure the EVs are different, but so far the set is almost identical to the Murkrow Iron Man in 5th Gen. I go for the, uh, Shadow, the Shadow Sneak because I thought... I just wanted to try and get up some priority, but I didn't know he'd have the Roost. I mean, I should have in the first place. I should have gone for the Sacred Sword, and I just played that kind of badly. Because I could have taken down the Murkrow right then and there. That wouldn't have been a problem anymore. So I send out my Lit Leo, who's also got a Violite. And Lit Leo has some surprising bulk. I mean, just like barely any investment in his defenses, and they go up a little bit. And uh, he goes for Brave Bird, doesn't knock me out. I'm left with a nice Reservoir of HP, just in case I want to take a Fake Out or something. Go for the Hyper Voice, knock it out, and in comes me and Fu, which means I'm definitely going to need to switch. So, I go into Froki, and, well, just a spotter, because it's paralyzed, it's my Scarfer, it can't do anything anymore. So, he gets a Drain Punch off, but didn't really matter. I'm going to go into my Noibat, as he's going to pull back and go into his Ponyard. And Ponyard, you know, I, I'm guessing that this is a Violite set, like most of them are nowadays. And, but it still didn't really appreciate that hurricane, and he gets the confusion, which is great. Now, again, I don't want this thing trying to set up in my face, so I'm going to go for the taunt because I don't want him going for sword stance. So now I'm just going to pull back and go into my lit Leo again, because I thought that he would either go for the Iron Head or maybe the Sucker Punch. I did not think that he would go for the knockoff. Now, I guess it's like Pontiard knock off everything, but still... I thought that since he saw I was faster, he would try and go for the Sucker Punch, or maybe he would just try and get off the most damage with, uh, well, I guess Knock Off would have got off the most damage. Anyway, he goes for Iron Head, and my Pancham flinches. Son of a bitch, stop it with the hacks. Uh, I mean, it's not like there's a, there's not like a huge amount of hacks, but in this kind of battle where I'm automatically at a disadvantage, I don't, the hacks is not appreciated. So now he goes into his drill bird, decide, deciding to preserve his Ponyard, goes for an Earthquake just to knock me out, and I'm going to knock him out with a couple Storm Throws. So down goes Drill Burr, and that was... Eh, it wasn't a huge threat to my team. It kind of was, but not really. So now out comes me and Fu. I know it's going to knock me out, but there's no point in switching here because Pancham was at 5 HP, and he couldn't... He, he doesn't outspeed anything else on his team, and it's just not worth it to keep him around. So now I'm going to go into my Noibat as he, and go for the Hurricane as he avoids it, goes for the knockoff, and I take it pretty well. I lose my Violite, but at least I'm alive. So I go for Hurricane, finally knock out his, or almost knock out his Mian Fu. I was really close to it. And uh, he actually knocks himself out thanks to hitting himself in the confusion. Now, I don't know if it was Min Max that I didn't knock him out, but either way, it ended out okay. So now that he's getting confusion hacks, I guess the hacks I got just balances out. He goes for Sucker Punch, but I'm like, nope, I got Roost. And uh, I, I'm, I pretty much lost the battle, but I'm not willing to give up that easily. So he goes for Sucker Punch as I go for a Hurricane. Um, I thought that it might be able to take the Funny Art out, but it doesn't. He's just going to be able to um, knock me out the next turn with an Iron Head. And turns out it was the Speed Tie the entire time. Go figure. But anyway, GG Man, that was a pretty fun game. So on to the talk of the day. Today's talk of the day, I want to ask you guys what you think of non-standard, well, non-standard Pokemon, I guess you could say. Now, before I asked about gimmick sets, but now I'm asking, like, substandard Pokemon. You obviously seen that sometimes it can work. I mean, I managed to get my opponent down to two Pokemon, and I think that was a real accomplishment considering the team I was using. But, in general, what do you think about lower tier Pokemon being able to beat upper tier Pokemon? In, in my personal opinion, I think that some Pokemon, like, their job is to do that. They were, like, made to do it. If you look at, um, let's just take, for an example, a Chespin. A Chespin has Bulletproof, and it's a Grass-type, and it can easily, easily check Fungus, whose primary moves are Spore, Giga Drain, and Sludge Bomb. Sure, it might run Hidden Power Fire or Clear Smog, which will definitely put a dent in it, but otherwise, it doesn't do that much damage at all. Plus, if that Chespin happens to be running Synthesis, that Fungus has pretty much just got an uphill battle that it's just not gonna win. So, leave your comments down below, guys. I really want to know your opinions on this. Don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends and family, so that way we can reach that 2k goal by the end of the month. So, I think that's all I have to say. 
and I will see you guys next time. Please be sure to visit the artists that make these videos possible. Also, if you need help recording X and Y battles, be sure to message me on Twitter or add me on Skype and we can set something up. Finally, I hope you all enjoyed that video, and if you did, maybe you'd like to check out more of my content in the annotations or the links in the description below. Yep. Yeah. He is super dead. <laughs> I can loot him, what the fuck? <laughs> that is so fucked up! It's not a Taco Bell! <laughs>